Well, speaking of challenges, uh, there are a lot of new authors out there who'd like to get started. What do you see as the biggest challenge today for them? Yeah, sure. This this uh, you know this is the big uh, sixty thousand dollar question, and you know I, I think I think honestly is um, is that things really haven't changed so much uh, with all these changes I was just talking about um, the core. Um, the core effort, the core impetus of becoming an author, um, really is is just the same as it ever was. Um, you know, you have to ask yourself: Are you constantly ask yourself? Are you offering something that's really well crafted? Um, have you thought deeply about it? Have you worked on it for quite a long time, um, or at least put in your put in your time, and 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 know that you know you do have time. I mean, some people get sort of off on this one particular topic and they spend a lot of time on it and they're almost um, perhaps even married to it, but they don't realize there could be this other, this other idea over here that maybe is a part of that main idea. It could be the thing people really want to read about and you could really develop a 250 page book around it and it, and it has more focus and more interest and you can tell more stories around it instead of sort of the magnum opus idea. Um, so I think that's, that's part of the key thing, is just really, um, you know, I, I hate saying things that my you know, high school English teacher or college uh, uh, you know, writing teacher would say, but narrowing down your topic, to me that sounds like you're, you know, you're whittling it away to nothing or you're making it so specific, who's gonna care? Um, but sometimes it's really just that one idea that you walk around and um, talk about from a whole lot of different perspectives that really gets people thinking and that can lead to a book title that um, that sounds simple that's an easy get and people say you know hey i really need that um, you'd be surprised at how many authors have stumbled upon their great book idea or their great book that has sold so well um, it's not quite as linear as you might think it, it might be something that's a little bit more specific and a piece of what you think is really the the big idea. So, so biggest challenges for new authors. I think I think the biggest challenge is really just to keep working on your craft and working on your message. Um, you know, I, probably the other big challenge that's related to that is how does that message relate to the world that we live in today? What are the anxieties that people are experiencing in this world of uh, you know of terrorism of um, you know politics these days? You know what's there's such a groundswell of emotion going on around the current uh, political uh, climate that we're in right now, the, the presidential election. You know, what, what's driving that? You know, what, how do you speak to that? Where's, what's the spiritual side of all of that? And what do people need? What do they, what do they want to hear and what do they need to hear? Um, both those questions are, are very important. Um, at Zondervan, we talk a lot about uh, one of the phrases we like to use is, um, fresh expressions of timeless truth. Uh, you know, the way we we live and think spiritually doesn't really change a whole lot. We're 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 made to be spiritual beings. We're made to communicate in sacred symbols. We are made to uh, to pine for God and to look to God and to discover God. Um, but our language changes. The way we see the world changes. Our worldliness changes. So how do you craft messages? How do you craft ideas? How do you tell stories that, that help us point us back to that, to timeless truth, to the unchanging God? Um, that's, that's an ever-changing task. And that's why there's always opportunity for new content. Um, you know, someone you may think has written a book about your idea already. No, don't, don't think that way. You're going to write it in a way that no one else has, and you might reach people out there that that other author never will reach. I think those are those are some key challenges, and to me, that's you know that's the thing to focus on uh, the most. Of course, I've talked a little about discoverability and platforming. and I can talk about that more, and those are key challenges too. But I, I just wanted to make sure that that the, the key thing really, and a lot of authors don't realize, is working on your craft is probably the primary thing that you can keep spending time on. 
Well, I think that's very interesting. And I think you've uh, touched on the fact that there are not only many challenges out there, but also many opportunities. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'd say. <laughs> Which is good news for new authors, I think. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things, too, about, um, you know, there's a, there's a certain tension that, that publishers uh, like, like a Zondervan struggle with on, you know, where we work on a very large scale, of course. Um, but the tension is that on one hand, there's shrinking retail space. So we have, in a way, it's, it's harder to have a, a multitude of authors uh, and you want to just have the cream of the crop there all the time. I mean, those are the ones that are really going to have a big impact in physical bookstores. But then you've got the online retailers and their, their shelf space is unlimited. So how do, you, how do you almost set up sort of two streams in your publishing program, working with authors who can reach a very engaged and, and um, devoted um, fan base readership, but it might be small and more focused uh, versus authors who can reach just quite a few people through a, through a more mass scale like uh, retail distribution. Um, it's, it's an interesting time, and yes, there is a lot of opportunity. And I think it's very good for people to know just what you just said, you know, that there's not just the mass market authors that are going to get your attention, that, um, you know, there's opportunities for uh, more focused plays, as you said. Yep, indeed, indeed. So what would you suggest to authors that are interested in working with Zondervan? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I think I would say that... Uh, you know, first off, we you know we, we do keep we do try to keep a a very limited number of titles uh, in view each year. It's we're very fortunate in that we could probably publish twice as many titles as uh, as we actually do, at least in terms of the interest that people show in our program. Um, but you know, we run, we try to run a good and effective business model, uh, one that works in the environment that we're in today. Um, so uh, most of our titles we, we, we acquire are acquired through literary agents, uh, particularly literary agents, literary agents in the Christian uh, marketplace, the Christian space. Um, they do a great job of um, helping to identify authors who've got good ideas, they've got growing platforms. Um, they're people that we could invest in on the long, for the long term, not just one book, but you know, we like to think that we'll have them for their whole writing career, really, that we can be a home for them. Um, we do deals maybe in, you know, in, in smaller batches of books, but really the idea is to, is to, is to keep them in the, in the stable and to really establish a deep sense of trust and relationship between publisher and author. Um, so a lot of, you know, my recommendation for authors who are interested in working with Zondervan is to, is to, um, you know, start that start that big process of doing all your homework, uh, creating a great great book proposal. Um, you know, listening to what people say about how to build a platform and, and staying focused on that on that kind of thing. Again, not as your primary priority. Working on your craft always should be your primary priority. But what is you know what are you doing to develop that? And and then you know find out who those agents are. You know. Uh, you know, what I like to say to a lot of authors is, you know, look at the books that you're reading. How do you fit in with that stable of authors? What are you saying that's perhaps a little bit different? And uh, who are the agents that are acquiring those authors? Sometimes you see them in the backs of those books in the acknowledgments section. Um, you know, if you keep at it, you'll figure out who's who. And, um, and then, you know, be very, uh, you know, be very respectful in how you contact them and um, be very thoughtful in what you offer up to them. And they can, you know, eventually over time, if you keep working at your craft, you know, they, you will rise to the top and they will, and they will recognize you and, and, and start seeing that you as someone that they can invest in and start helping you with your proposal and refining it and, and getting it to um, acquisi acquisitions editors that are on a, a team like my team that's on it. Well, David, this has really been wonderful. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom and insight. I think it'll be very helpful to our audience. Um, and we look forward to uh, hearing you speak in September. Yeah, you bet. It's been a pleasure. I, I really enjoy this. Thanks, Brian. Well, thank you so much, David. All right. Take care.